Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. In this episode, we are going to be talking about all of the events from Thursday, November 11th, and Friday, November 12th of 2021. So, I'm not going to go into it. Life happened. I fell apart. We're good. We're back. Um, it, It is what it is. I just, you know, life happened. Um, it sucked. Uh, so here's, here's the plan. Here's where we are going forward. So, um, right now we are going to do Thursday and Fridays. This is going to go up traditionally the Monday at midnight Eastern time. Um, so I'm recording this a little early in the day on Sunday. Um, not really actually recording at my normal time, but what I'm going to do is record this one, upload it, schedule it, and then do some of the things that need to go along with that. Um, and then I'm going to record, upload, and schedule Saturday and Sunday's episode, like events episode, uh, to go up Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, And in fact, even as I'm saying this, this one is actually going to go as soon as I'm done. Um, I'm just going to post it live because that's easier for me in terms of the things that I need to do. Um, Yeah, so we're just going to go in like that. Um, Obviously, Friday there was, or Thursday, there were quite a few things going on as it was still state visit mania. Um, plus it was Armistice Day or Veterans Day in the U.S., but Armistice Day in Europe. Um, so that certainly has some attention. Um, so lots of stuff going on. Um, and so that's why I'm choosing to split it up. That way we have two episodes, uh, listen to them both, you know, in, in your own time. Not a huge rush by any means. Um, so with that, we are going to jump right in. So the way I broke this down and it unintentionally kind of worked out perfectly, um, the way I was going to talk about Thursday events were to start with talking about Armistice Day, which is the, the name of the holiday that celebrates the end of the First World War, um, or Armistice, um, from that, um, which is the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, um, is when peace kind of began after that war. Um, and so that is what we're going to start with, and then we'll jump in to the rest of everything. So on Thursday, um, which was November 11th, or Armistice Day in Europe, Veterans Day here in the U.S., that's what we celebrate it as. Um, King Philippe of Belgium visited the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier that is located in Brussels uh, to do, it's an annual event that... Um, pays respect, tribute to all the soldiers who have passed in the First and Second World War, as well as any um, conflicts since then that Belgium, Belgian soldiers have been a part of. Um, so while Belgium has not been an active, like they have not been at war with anybody since the Second World War, um, they have joined in on conflicts um, to support NATO countries and things like that. Um, So he attended that event um, on November 11th, and then also on November 11th, uh, the Duchess of Cornwall attended and um, the... She visited the Field of Remembrance, which is held at Westminster Abbey. Um, That is basically the Field of Poppies, Um, there's a lot of them throughout England, but particularly here in, um, in, in London, the Westminster Abbey one is like considered the national one. Um, so this is a, it's an event that the Duchess of Cornwall has been doing, I 
think since 2016, but completely officially everything tw since 2019, um, be for that. Um, so the Duke of Edinburgh has done the, or did this, um, in the past, um, which the British Royal family social media made sure like that that was the, the narrative, the passing down, um, event. And so during the event, Camilla was able to talk with veterans. Um, she laid a wreath of remembrance, um, and then a bouquet of flowers at the tomb of the unknown warrior, which is in Westminster Abbey. Um, it's, depending on what entrance you go in, but like what I would consider the main entrance, um, you walk in through there and it's literally one of the first things. Um, I think it's always surrounded by poppies. Um, it is the tomb of the unknown warrior, uh, which is very similar to the tomb of the unknown soldier. Um, and so she also laid a bouquet of flowers there, but again, she was able to speak with, um, veterans and, others in, um, to talk about the Poppy Legion and the 100th anniversary of that. Um, and the Poppy Legion is, um, basically the charity that provides or that supports the poppy wearing that we see, um, and supports military service, men and women, um, and has been doing so for a hundred years. So she did that. Um, and those were like the Armistice Day um, events that went on. And so now we are going to jump in um, and talk about the British royal family. So now we are going to go day to day. So there was nothing else going on in Belgium Thursday or Friday. So now we are going to move over to the UK and talk about the Friday events over there. Kingdom. In the UK on Friday, so while Remembrance, while Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday are kind of their own separate things, um, the British royal family kind of, it, and the British people, um, it's, a, it's a week worth of Remembrance events. Um, so a lot of the government events are focused on Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday, um, kind of from, you know, Monday to Remembrance Sunday. Um, and so that's what we've seen a lot of. And part of the deciding factor of splitting up this episode is that the British Royal Family had Saturday and Sunday events that I want to talk about in great depth as well. Um, and so solely for time's sake, I chose to split up this episode, um, to talk about those events and kind of give them their due as well, um, rather than trying to rush everything through. So, um, on Friday, the Duchess of Cambridge released a conversation that she had with a 98-year-old army veteran, as well as a 10-year-old member of the scouting organization. I, they referred to her as a Cub Scout, um, which in the States means something a little different. Um, she, she is 10, which is like a full-on uh, scout age range if you're here in the U.S., but again, everybody's scouting, sy scouting system is a little bit different. Um, so they took part in a conversation about the generational need to remember uh, the importance of these wars. Um, so not just the second world war, um, but also, or not just the first world war, I'm sorry, I got them confused, but also the second, um, and any other kind of global con conflict that will or has arisen. Um, because that has very much shaped the way, um, our world is now. Uh, those two things have impacted 
day-to-day functioning of our world substantially. Um, and so that is a huge piece of it. Um, so they, the Cub Scout has been working on a, the Scout has been working on a project, um, highlighting the importance of remembering. And so she was able to have this conversation with a man who served in the second world war, um, and was born just after the end of the first. Um, and so obviously that is like super important. Um, and you know, they were able to talk about memories and history and, and all of that. And Kate facilitated it. Um, which I think, you know, I talked about this in the last episode that went up on Thursday too, like the follow through and the commitment that she has to these projects is incredible. And like, this is something that we saw nothing of until it was released. Um, but like, it's all background work and just, it was great. Um, so that was the, the event going on on Friday. Um, and so in the next episode I put up, we'll talk about, um, the festival of remembrance as well as remembrance Sunday. Um, as those have already occurred, cause I am recording this on Sunday, but, um, we will talk about those events in the next episode. So check that one out as well. Um, and now we are going to move over to the Danish Royal family. Denmark. In Denmark, Thursday and Friday marked day two and three of the state visit to Germany, which is a grand total of four days. So there will be some um, remaining talking about the Danish state visit to Germany um, in the episode I put up next. Um, But I want to talk about day two and three. So first we'll start with day two, um, which was the second and last day in Berlin. Um, It was also Crown Prince Frederick's last day on the visit. Um, And so a lot of the agenda was super separate because because there's also like a trade visit happening at the same time. That's kind of what Frederick was off doing um, while Queen Margrethe was doing more um, cultural visits and learning about um, German culture and how German and Danish culture kind of collaborate together. So she started, she visited a conservatory of music um, where she took part in a concert there. Uh, Let's see, she also, um, oh, so before we get into that, before we get into the separate agenda, I do want to mention like they started their day together by opening the German Danish business conference that is currently being held. Um, and like I said, that's where Frederick spent most of his day. Um, but meanwhile, okay, so back to where I was, um, she visited a, uh, conservatory of music, uh, literature house, Berlin, um, which obviously promotes literature, but also culture through writing. Um, and then, um, In the afternoon, Queen Margrethe and Crown Prince Frederick visited a museum focused on uh, European migration of the 20th century. So this is when kind of like um, Europe and Europeans were kind of traveling everywhere um, by force and by also like desire. Uh, Both of those things kind of were included in that. Um, But this is how we get kind of a more melting pot version of Europe than what was initially there. Um, and so that's what this museum was focused on. Um, and then, so I'll talk about Frederick's events now. So he, um, aside from the business conference that he attended most of the day, he took part in different breakout sessions. He gave a speech as well. Um, he also visited an architecture, uh, forum, which I think was kind of taking place in concurrence with the business partnership conference. Um, like it wasn't the same thing, but kind of, um, and then he also visited a music venue, which they didn't talk too much about that 
experience, which is fine. Um, and then again, that museum focused on immigration in the 20th century. Um, and then at the end of that, of day two, uh, Queen Margrethe hosted a thank you event to President Steinmeier and uh, for his hospitality. So this is where, you know, we've kind of talked about just in um, the last episode, the Dutch king and queen hosted a concert for the Norwegian king and queen to thank them for the visit. Uh, this is very much the same kind of concept, except this was more banquet style state dinner-esque. Um, however, Queen Margrethe, the visiting head of state, hosted it. So it wasn't quite a state visit, a state dinner, um, even though it was very similar. So she, it, it's a little more casual, not like a lot more casual, but still a little, it was still Galloware, Tiara, uh, black tie event, but, um, just like a hair more casual. There were, um, there's entertainment provided. So musicians, um, as well as a performance from, I would assume the Danish Royal Ballet, um, because I doubt Germany has a Royal Ballet since... Germany is not a monarchy, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so those were the state visit events. Um, and then also simultaneously at the same time on Thursday, uh, Crown Princess Mary visited a new school um, that is participating in the school nutrition program that is sponsored by a collaboration of organizations, um, all spearheaded by the Mary Foundation. So it was a Mary Foundation visit. Um, the rumor is she was getting extra loud applause. I, I'm not sure why it would have been extra loud. Maybe it's just more people were able to wait outside. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It was it was interesting that they like were commenting on how loud it must have been. Um, so that was day two. Um, and so now we'll talk about day three, which is, uh, the third day of the state visit and also Queen Margrethe's first day solo. Um, so she traveled south to Munich, um, to take on the next two days of engagements. So she started out that visit and day by attending an official reception at the residence of the Bavarian prime minister. So, um... I assume this is just kind of like Germany's version of an autonomous community. Um, Bavaria has their own like president, um, who is a little bit different than the German federal president. Um, but I think like president Steinmeier is president of everything. And then there's like m m prime ministers kind of beneath that. I think again, could be wrong. I have tried I've, I've tried to understand Germany's, like, system, and I don't. I don't get it. I have tried. Desperately tried. Um, I need, like, a, an explainer, and I don't know how to find them that aren't in German. So, anyway, um, so that's how she started, and then she visited two different um, locations that are focused on kind of well, one is focused on culture, so she visited the uh, Glypho, Glypho, I don't know, Glyphotechet Museum. I have no idea if that's correct, um, which is the oldest public museum in Munich. Um, and then she also visited Munich Urban Collab, which is kind of a like co-working space for entrepreneurs. Um, and to talk about, like, sustainable entrepreneurship going on in Germany, um, and specifically in Bavaria and Munich. Um, so those were the events of the day. There was initially supposed to be a banquet dinner held in Munich as well. Um, the problem is, if you aren't paying attention to the news, um, and we're going to see this a lot in the next month, I think, um, the COVID cases are on the rise in Europe and that that's expected. It's, it's flu season, it's cough and cold season. Um, makes sense to me that that's happening. Um, but because of that, there were restrictions put on in place for the visit, such as, um, they did end up canceling the banquet dinner. Um, 
there was not allowed like a public gathering to see the queen just different things like that ended up happening um and so that is what was going on on Thursday for Queen Margrethe um I do believe Crown Princess Mary had an event as well um where she attended the University of Copenhagen's um, annual celebration. So I think this is the anniversary of the, the founding of the University of Copenhagen, which was in the 1400s. I think it says it's 1479, uh, which is, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, it was founded in 1479. So that's insane. Um, so during the visit, Mary presided over the the meeting portion of the celebration um, where people were given different awards. Um, and then she was also able to talk with the award winners afterwards. So that was Crown Princess Mary's event. Um, and so with that, we are going to end the Danish section and move over to the Dutch state visit to Norway. The Netherlands. Thursday was the final day of the Dutch state visit to Norway. Um, and on this day, it was basically like a half day, essentially, of events. Um, but King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima traveled about 300 miles or 500 and some kilometers north um, of Oslo to Trondheim, which is um, not quite like the northernmost part of Norway, but like directly straight from nor from Oslo north. Um, Trondheim is on the ocean, but then like Norway does a weird shape. So Trondheim is north, but not like all the way up. And, um, so King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima headed up there and they were accompanied by Crown Prince Akun, who was finally able to take part in the state visit. I'm very glad. Um, so, and then Crown Princess Metamarit was also there as well. Um, and so this day was very specifically focused on sustainability, um, specifically around the oceans, but also just sustainability in general, you know, energy conversion, etc. cetera. Um, so they started the day, um, they visited the Center for Plankton Te Technology, um, which is basically research on how to grow and harvest um, organisms that are lower on the aquatic food chain, um, such as plankton, kale, seaweed, algae, um, and others, kelp, etc., um, to, I think, learn how to grow it and therefore, like, kind of re-sustain the ocean. Um, I don't know, there wasn't, like, a clear idea of what was supposed to come out of this research given in the descriptions I read, uh, which came both from the Norwegian royal household and the Dutch royal household. Um, but you know, it's a cool concept nonetheless. Um, and then they also visited the Norwegian University of Science and Technology um, to learn about the data capture that they are doing on uh, marine life as well as aquaculture, which is, um, again, this like vegetation in the ocean. Um, so they are using drones and obviously research vessels, ships, etc. Um, to do this. And then um, Akun and Metamarit hosted a lunch um, at the royal residence in Trondheim. So much like just about any royal country, monarchy, um, there are different residences in a lot of the areas. Um, so Trondheim is kind of the second most populous area of Norway aside from Oslo. Um, and so there is a royal residence up there. Um, Spain has, I think, a royal residence in every single autonomy, or at least most of them, um, which is cool. Um, yeah, there are just lots of different royal residences, depending on which country. I mean, obviously, like in England, um, 
there are royal residences, both official and unofficial, throughout the country. Um, so, like, Sandringham is a, is a case of, like, y- yes, it's official, um, but it's not managed by the um, trust, the, the royal trust of buildings. Um, but it is an official r- royal residence. Um, and so that's just, like, there's a royal residence in Trondheim. Um, so they hosted a lunch for Willem Alexander and Maxima. Um, and then they also attended at another university um, a discussion about energy conversion from both Dutch and Norwegian experts who had different booths as well as um, just ongoing conversations. And then the final event of the visit was a concert at the Nadaros Cathedral, um, which has a lot of Sami people influence. Um, So they lit memorial candles for um, the Sami people um, at the cathedral. And then uh, Akun and Metamart escorted Willem Alexander and Maxima to the airport uh, where they left on the official plane, thus marking the end of that visit. Um, and then they themselves boarded a plane back to Oslo, a commercial flight back, um, cause you know, save the environment, all the things. Um, so yeah, that is what was going on. That was the end of the state visit. I will say too, before, um, the end of the visit, Willem Alexander and Maxima gave an interview. They always do like a press conference at the end of each state visit. Um, so they will answer almost any question posed at them that is appropriate. I mean, they don't answer a lot of questions like personal, but, um, they talked about the relationship between the Dutch and Norwegian Royal family. Um, they talked about how each of their older two daughters are doing, um, kind of in this newfound, uh, landscape that they're in. So Amalia on a gap year and then Alexia in Wales for her baccalaureate. Um, they talked about their next upcoming state visit, which is Greece in December. Um, and the focus is there. So just lots of different conversations. Um, so that marked the official, official end. Um, and yeah, that it was lovely. Um, I am still, I think, and I will be to the end of time disappointed that Akun didn't take part in more. Obviously, I understand that it's a cold and like I feel super bad for him and precautions must absolutely be taken right now. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like sad. But other than that, I loved every minute of it. It was great fun to watch and see. Um, and I am very much looking forward to our next rounds of state visits, which are, you know, coming up. So, um, that is what was going on in the Netherlands and Norway over the weekend. There was nothing going on in Norway separately on Friday. Um, and so now we are going to move over to the Spanish royal family. Spain. In Spain, what I thought was supposed to just be a digital participation in an event ended up being a trip to Paris for King Felipe. So either I just assumed or Casa Real's website got it wrong. And I don't remember which one it is. Um, It could have been a combination of both. However, uh, King Felipe was in Paris for the Paris Peace Forum on Thursday. Um, so this is an annual forum held to discuss, um, lots of different issues, global issues. Um, there were a lot of pretty important people at this event, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but, uh, they, this year's focus was on really, uh, the international response to the pandemic, um, and how the international community can cooperate with each other more to, um, I don't know, make sure that we have a cohesive response and that it's just a little, uh, more seamless and we don't have every country going about it completely there on their own. Um, 
to the detriment of others. Um, we'll see. Because obviously that's still basically happening. Um, so King Felipe was in attendance. The um, I don't actually know what his official title is in the EU. He used to be the foreign minister in Spain. Um, but he has a very important official title in the European Union as well. He's some sort of like foreign minister essentially for the EU. Um or a high commissioner or something like that. Uh, so he was in attendance. His name is Josep uh, Borel. Borel? Anyway. Um, the biggest and most exciting to me attendee, aside from King Felipe, was Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, and I believe this marks the first official time Felipe has met a member of this current administration of the U.S., um, which literally made my day. I saw the pictures and I lost my mind. Um, because I, at this point, which is bizarre, and I don't think I actually do, I'm just kind of, like, accepting of, of it. Um, like, it's just very normal now. Um, but I certainly don't think I take it, take it for granted. Um, but, like, there are very few times when I am struck by the, oh, yeah, Kamala Harris is the first woman vice president, and this is the first, like, one of the first times it's hit me in a while. Um, the other time was when she was standing next to basketball players, which was just recently as well. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but <laughs> I don't know why that was a moment, but it was. Uh, but her meeting the king of Spain as vice president was very cool. Um... It was just really awesome. There are not that many words that I can use to describe it, but it was a very cool moment. Um, and so they attended the forum. Um, I don't think King Felipe gave a speech. He did give a digital um, address that was like played. So different heads of states gave digital greetings um, that then played. Um, and then I do, I, I know, I don't exactly know what she said, but I know Vice President Harris also gave an address um, in person. Um, and so he was there for that. And then afterwards, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, um, hosted a dinner for the attendees um, that King Felipe also attended. So that was his Thursday. And then on Friday, he spent the day in Galicia. Um, so he did a couple of different things there. Uh, first, he visited um, the Stellantis Group um, factory in, uh, in Galicia, in Vigo. Um, and so Stellantis is actually like the the company that owns 15 brands. Um, if you're from the States, they own Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, etc. Um, they also own Fiat, Opel, P uh, Pigo, um, and some other brands, uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, Maserati, I think. They own a lot. Um... But in Spain, um, it's Opel, P Pigo, and a couple of others that I didn't mention um, that are out of that production center in Vigo. Um, and they have recently started making commercial vehicles in an electric version. So commercial vehicles are like the, the, the cars that handymen drive or floral delivery or grocery delivery even now um, will use a commercial vehicle. And so they have started producing electric versions, which is amazing. Um, so he was able to view some of those, view the factory. Um, he took part in a meeting and then viewed the, some of the cars and then drove one of the cars to the factory. That was really cool. Um, I don't know, it was just a fun kind of event. Um, the Spanish Royal House social media made a point to share that he had been there in 1996 as well, um, as the Prince of Astorias, which I thought was cool. Um, 
and then so later on in the day he also attended a lunch um, to mark the 40th anniversary of the Confederation of Businessmen of Galicia um, which was holding their anniversary lunch um, and King Felipe was in attendance he is the I don't know if he's honorary president I think I think that's his official title of um, the Chamber of Commerce, like the Spanish Chamber of Commerce. So business events like this are pretty much a constant for him. Um, It's pretty expected that he is there. Um, So that was his Thursday and Friday. And so now we are going to finish up this episode with the Swedish royal family. Sweden. In Sweden, uh, Thursday marked the 19th visit, uh, 19th of 21 visits to a county. So Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel visited Dalarna County. Um, They took on a series of engagements that we have come to expect from these events. Um, So they started with a meeting at the governor's residence about the impact of COVID on the county. Um, They visited the local hospital to learn about the impact that COVID has had on their healthcare system, um, as well as different things such as how the hospital is analyzing COVID tests. Um, And then they also visited the local university, um, a few businesses, and then um, like a... a, um, like culture house, like a a concert house, um, to learn about the impacts that the pandemic has been having on all of those sectors. Um, as well as, you know, kind of now in a, not so much post COVID, but a post panic, maybe, I don't know. Are we post panic? Some days I feel like I am. And other days I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not ever going to be past panicking. Um, but alas, Maybe someday I will be. Um, So they learned all about that. And then Friday was the 225th gathering of the Academy of Military Sciences um, that Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel attended. Um, So this is where different awards are given out um, for advancement in military sciences. I, I don't really understand. There wasn't a great explanation of the event. Um, it, it also mentioned that the president of Finland was there and gave a keynote speech. Um, I know it was gala. I know I really, really, really liked Victoria's dress. Uh, but that's what I know. (laughs) I don't know much about the event otherwise. Um, but yeah, so that is part one, essentially, of a two-part episode. But I'm splitting them up. So you will never know the difference, really. Um, so again, like I said, look out for um, an episode early later on um, today mm, on Monday um, that is focused on Saturday and Sunday events. That is um, the final day of the Danish state visit to Germany, uh, Festival of Remembrance and Remembrance Sunday. Um, a couple of World Cup qualifying things going on, um, a visit to the opera. There's been a lot going on this weekend, which is why we're separating this even, you know, that's why we're doing this. So with that, I'm going to end this episode. I will talk to you later. Uh, like and review this podcast wherever you're listening. Check out thedailyroyal.com and the Daily Royal on Instagram, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.